Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I am back with another video for Neat and Tangled. This stamp set is called Making Magic and it is part of the new April 2018 release. I'm going to be using the stamps and the dies today. So I'm starting off um, with just some Nina Solar White cardstock. I drew myself a line that's going to be my stage and then I covered that up with a piece of masking paper. I picked out a rainbow of distress inks. I swear to you I can make a Neat and Tangled car without a rainbow on it. Um, but I don't know why I would want to. <laughs> so I thought it would be fun to kind of have like rainbow lights on the back of the stage. So that is what I am doing here. Basically, I'm just lining up um, two different color masks and then concentrating the color at the bottom, fading it out toward the top. So the yellow is the first one that I started with. And then once I was happy with where the color was, I'm going to go ahead and remove the masks. This is two inch um, 3M post-it note tape that I'm using to mask here. Um, so once I have that one lined up, I thought it would probably be a good idea to go in and I'm making these little dots on the masking paper, not on my card base, but I'm just trying to, basically I counted the colors I had, I think I had seven, so I'm trying to evenly space those out so each one will have a ray of light and then it also gives me kind of a point to line up from as I'm putting the masking tape down. Now there are some times where I made the triangle a little bit too big or a little bit too small. Um, I tried to catch it before I did the next inking, um, but it just took a little bit of adjustment. Ultimately, I'm not going for perfection here, um, just the kind of the overall feel of it. Um, I don't know, I felt a lot like Laura Basson here doing my rainbows of geometric shapes, uh, but I think overall it turned out the way that I had hoped. Um, it gave that feel of just, you know, these lights behind this stage at the end of it. So I will warn you about this 3M post-it note tape. The reason I used it is because it doesn't absorb any of the color. It has like a coating on the top so that it won't absorb it. Um, but because it doesn't absorb it, then that... Um, ink kind of sits on top. It would do it with regular distress inks too. I think it does it even more so with the oxides because they are, um, they have that, you know, that pigment ink and so they stay wet a little bit longer. For this one, I do want there to be just like a, a corner of where, like if there was a purple light off stage, I did, I just felt like it looked unfinished without another color that would have been like beaming into the card. So then once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the colors, but I am going to flip it. See how I flipped it over here to do the greens and blues um, because I didn't want it to pick up any of that um, pink, orange and make brown. So um, you could obviously get a new piece of post-it note tape. I just, you know, I try to conserve my supplies where I can. So um, ultimately, I just moved all the way across the card. And again, here on this bottom, um, or I'm sorry, on this right-hand edge, I'm going to do it um, so that there's a little bit of orange peeking through because that's how it would be if there was a light over there. So once that's done, I'm going to remove the mask from the bottom and I'm going to flip that up to the top to keep that straight edge. And then I'm using Hickory Smoke. This is one of the latest Distress Oxide colors to just color in my stage. Um, basically, this is just going to conserve my Copic ink so that I don't have to uh, continually go over the card to get it to be as dark as I want to. I'm going to remove that and then um, I thought I was done. Don't mind my son who's playing in the hallway, right? Um, so I thought I was done and then I was like, well, you know, usually when you have a lot of lights, you have like the little speckles and stuff and I'm always looking for an excuse to add shine to things. So I did use some, just some clean water and a number two round brush, kind of spattered that on the background. You want to uh, be minimal with your moisture. We're not working on watercolor paper here. I can't take a lot of water. Um, and then I just scooped out some Perfect Pearls. I'm mixing it on an acrylic black because I had already put my, um, my graph what is this thing called? My, it's not graph. What is it? Grid. Ha <laughs> ha. Wow. Um, grid paper back in place. So I just mixed it on acrylic block. So they did add some sparkle and some shine, which I really like. And then I'm going to put that aside and then work on the Copa coloring. So here I'm stamping the little boy, his assistant, um, who's going to be levitating and then the hoop that will pass over her. I'm using intense black ink from Simon's stamp to stamp that down because it is Copic safe. And I did end up stamping this twice. The reason why I stamped it twice is because I always like to outline my images, um, but even I didn't have the courage to outline the, the hoop. 
Uh, I didn't think I could get it perfectly straight. And so because I didn't think I could get it perfectly straight, I just decided to leave it. Um, sometimes you just have to know what your boundaries are. And for me, uh, a perfectly straight round line, that's a, that's a boundary I'm not willing to cross right now. So I'm going to color them, their skin tones, the same exact way. And I'm just going to do them at the same time while I have the markers out. For her, um, there's going to be some shading where uh, around her face, a little bit in her ears, where her arm, um, I'm, I guess the way that I shaded her is if the light source was at the top right, that's typically how I do it. Uh, the other one that I use most frequently is a center light, which is probably more what his is. I don't think anybody's going to notice um, it, so I don't think it matters, honestly. Just do whatever you're comfortable with. But there will be shading underneath her legs where her right leg is back behind her left. For him, there's also going to be shading around his face where his hairline is. I tend to add shading um, if something doesn't have, looks like it has a specific light source or doesn't have, look like it has something that would cast a shadow on it. I usually add the shadows down and to the left and that's what I did with his hand. Um, the one that's outstretched, the one that is at his side would have a shadow that was cast by the sleeve of his suit coat. So starting at the lightest, working all the way out to the darkest. You've seen this song and dance before. And um, it does look really dark. If you've never seen this color combination before, it does tend to look pretty dark when you're first um, putting down the color. Don't be afraid of that E04. It really blends out quite a bit with the E11. And then it will start to look substantially lighter as we add in other colors. It looks super dark right now because it's just uh, on a white background. There isn't anything else uh, to compare it to. And all color is relative to what's around it. So again, working back out to the lightest color, I decided that um, usually when I, I'm doing these for the lightest color, even though it doesn't need it, this the lightest color I use is an E50 and it is a little bit more yellow than the other colors I use. So I usually do to put that all over the coloring just so everything is consistent. Uh, my shadow colors in the skin tone are a little bit warmer. Um, so for their little, I, hers, I colored it as if there was actual blush on her cheeks. So I did flicks of color, um, you know, where her cheeks bone, cheekbones would be. For him, I just did two little dots. Um, I'm sure it probably gets hot working up on stage and he would probably be a little bit flushed. And also it's adorable to add. So I picked out um, some E40s to do their hair color. The reason I picked the E40s um, is we'll have the story time when, when we get there, but I, I did pick it for a reason. So it is definitely a more ash um, color, which means it just has less um, red in it. It's a cooler brown. And um, I'm going to do him as a blonde and her as a brunette, but I'm using that same color family. So for his, um, I'm doing little flicks of color where his part is that's going to be darker. I love the way his hair is drawn. I just think it is so darling. Um, but there's, you know, layers. So one layer of hair is sitting um, over another layer. So it'll be darker coming out from those. There'll be shadows there. And then this is the same thing. Lightest, darkest, darkest to lightest. Uh, especially with hair, you want to try to do some flicks of color if you can. Uh, that's going to give you the most natural look of hair um, versus just, you know, filling it in. I also wanted to just kind of bulk up a little bit of that darkness since I am using such light colors for his hair. So I went back in after I got all the way out to my lightest color and just added dark where I felt like it really would be the darkest colors. So for his, I used an E40, an E43, and an E44. For hers, I'm going to start with the 43 because I, I do want her to be a brunette. So it, it's going to be a little bit darker. And her hair is in these um, cute little like pigtail rolls. It's clearly an updo, which is adorable. Um, you know, cause she's, she's a magician's assistant. She got to go out looking fancy. Um, so for hers, I'm doing the same thing, the little flicks of color. You just want to be aware that you're following the shape of her hairline. So how her, um, bangs are drawn for the little, um, like knots that she has as her hair. Um, there's going to be a highlight in the center of that, and that's going to help it look more rounded. Um, but you want to make sure you're conserving that highlight. So if you are nervous about um, losing that highlight, make sure that you, you know, you don't have to do it twice. I always do it twice because it's just how I, it's just how I roll. Um, but you don't need to if you're worried about the color bleeding or losing that space or if you're um, particularly heavy handed, uh, you know, don't, you don't need to do it twice. Just do it one time. 
So then for him, I'm going to do his and her shoes black, but I'm going to do his suit um, like a gray pinstripe, just because I thought it would be fun to just do something different than just a black tuxedo. Um, and gray is a great neutral. So I'm going to start with the white objects. When you're coloring objects white, you're just adding the shadows. So for him, that's going to be the inside of his like shirt, his dress shirt. And for her, it's going to be her cap sleeves and um, the little uh, bib on her, like the bib collar on her dress. So let's talk about story time for a second. So the reason that I picked this is my natural hair color which I haven't seen really in years, let's be honest, is like a medium brown, okay? And I like my hair more blonde. My husband likes my hair more brown. So he likes it darker, I like it lighter. The deal we have struck over the 11 years we have been together is in the spring and summer, I go lighter, blonde. In the fall and winter, I go darker, Um and that works for us. So every fall and winter, I get low lights put in. Every spring and summer, I get highlights put in. Um, now, if you're happy with your natural hair color, like th this is totally not necessary. I'm just telling you what I do. Um, I just, I guess, I don't know. I never change the cut because I've always had long hair. Um, one time I cut it, it was so bad. And my mother told me not to do it. My mom told me not to do it. My hair was so long and she was like, you're going to hate it. Don't do it. And my grandmother was like, let her do what she wants. She wants to cut it, let her cut it. And she let me cut it. And then I was like, mom, you were so right. I should never have cut it. Um, but anyway, so I pretty much had hit longer hair my whole life. And I never really change. I mean, I might change like add bangs or take away bangs or, you know, do the, um, what is it? The Jennifer Aniston thing. It's, oh, the angled, like it's angled in the front. But anyway, um, so just very, very, small change-ups in the haircut. So I play a lot with the color um, because it's really the only place I can have any fun with it and be comfortable. So I, it is April. I am heading into spring and summer. So I'm like, put these blonde highlights in my hair, girl. Let's go. I'm ready to be done with the, the winter color. I'm ready to be done with the winter period, but I'm ready to be done with the winter color. And um, so the girl who does my hair, um, her name is Lori. I love her. She puts the highlights in and they're super cute, but I had had, it wasn't really brown in the winter. It was more of like a mahogany. And so there's a lot of red in my hair. So when she pulled the blonde through, um, we're going to be like cosmetology 101 here, very basic cosmetology. So in order, your hair lightens in levels. And in order for your hair to lighten from brown to blonde, it has to go through a red stage. It has to lift past the red stage. That's how you're going to get to blonde. So when she did my highlights, um, I felt like they were a little brassy, like some of them didn't lift as much as they should have. So I called her up. I had to, my son was supposed to go with me. She also cuts my son's hair. He was supposed to go with me to get his hair cut, but he was sick that day. So I had to take him back anyway. So I was like, hey, when we come over, do you think maybe we could tone my highlights? She's like, yeah, sure. No problem. Again, cosmet very basic cosmetology 101 here. A toner is not a hair dye. Basically, what a toner is, is almost like an ammonia-based product. Well, it is. Some of them are ammonia-based. But basically, what the product will do is lift any brassiness from your blonde. So, or you can do this with like a purple, um, like a very generic purple shampoo. It'll deposit those cool tones over the warm tones, cancel out that gold. Um... So she was like, yeah, no problem. So I go over, she puts the, the toner on, cuts my hairs, uh, my son's hair, and then we wash out the toner and I go into the bathroom and it's still wet and I can see how light my roots are. And I'm like, Lori? She's like, well, we might have to put one or two low lights back in. And I'm like, okay. So blow dry it and um, I get done blow drying it and I am not even, like this, no exaggeration, you guys, I am platinum. Like my hair was blonde with blonde low lights. Like it, it was the same color as my face. Um, and if you follow me on Instagram, you already saw this. Like my hair was so blonde. Now I told you already, my husband didn't like my hair blonde. My husband likes my hair dark and we compromise somewhere in between, but I am full blown blonde here. Like there's no, I am full blonde. And um, so she's like, can you come back tonight? We were going Easter shopping. She's like, can you come back tonight? 
and I'll, I'll, I'll put the low lights in. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I will be back. No worries there. Um, just side note on the coloring very quick. So I, don't you love how we're watching a card making video and yet the card making is the side note. Um, I thought that most of the time when you see performers, like their accessories match. And so I thought it would be very cute for their accessories to match. So I picked a blue green that kind of matched, um, the blue green I had in my background. And, um, then just really adding, you know, minimal shading to them, um, just like where her, where her arms hanging over her body, that would be darker, where the bow sitting on itself would be darker, center of his bow tie would be darker, and then where his coat is overhanging his vest, darker. All right, back to the story. Um, so I call my husband, I'm taking my son to my parents' house, um, so he and I can go do Easter shopping, because you can't buy your kids, you know, you can't pretend to be the Easter bunny if your kid's with you when you're doing the Easter shopping. Um, so I call him and I'm like, don't freak out. Do not freak out. And he's like, okay. I said, there was a little mishap with the toner situation. I'm very blonde. And he's like, okay, maybe it's not as bad as you think. And I said, um, babe, I am basically the same color as my mom. And he goes, Oh, brother. <laughs> now, my mother has had blonde hair forever. I like, I, my parents have been married for, I don't know, 40, 40 years, 45 years, something like that. And my dad's never even seen my mom with her natural hair color. She's been blonde as long as he's known her. And her hair is actually really dark brown. Um, but her hair is blonde, very, very blonde. And so he's like, oh, wow. Okay. So it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be super blonde. Um, here, I'm done with the coloring. I'm going in and adding my white gel pen accents. And for him, I'm really not pushing the marker down. I'm kind of letting it skip a little bit. So it almost looks like shiny pinstripes. And then for her, I'm going to do polka dots. So um, I ended up going back and she did put the the uh, low lights in. And now it is, it's still the irony is I feel like my roots are a little brassy. Um, but the moral of the story is like, I should have just been happy with what I had because it was fine. So now I'm in the situation where I'm probably still a little bit too blonde, um, but I'm going to worry about that in a couple of weeks because I don't actually want my hair to fall out of my head. I've seen that. Bit. Have you ever seen that video? There was a girl who, what did she do? She used a relaxer. If you don't know what a relaxer is, it's like if you have like naturally curly hair and you put a relaxer on there so that it goes straight, which I tried that. My hair is naturally curly. My, my, I begged my mother, begged and begged her to, my mom's always know best. That's true. Um, but anyway, I begged her to do it and then she did it and it, like I was, had straight hair for, I don't know, like a week and then it was back to curly. So not worth it. But anyway, that girl's hair fell out of her head. Google that on YouTube. It was terrible. It was so painful to watch. Uh, so maybe don't Google it, but it's, it was a video that was out there. So anyway, I got these all die cut out and now I'm stamping some stars in the background. I thought it would be cute to have them levitating. Wait for it. Disaster is going to strike here in a minute because sometimes this just happens. I go to stamp these little stars, block slips out of my hand, and lands exactly, I don't know, where you didn't want it. Um, so I have a moment of panic before I'm like, how am I going to try to fix this? Because I tell you guys all the time, everything is fixable, and that is why I leave stuff like this in. So what I did was I lined it back up with where it had fallen, and then I tried to stamp it to look as normal as possible. Now, I'm just going to have stars where I wasn't going to put them before. So I kind of just use them you know, to accent that corner. And then I also stamped them on the other side so it would have some continuity. Um, and it just is what it is. Like, there's nothing that I could do about it. I am going to mask it a little bit because it was, you know, it fell. You saw it. It fell right out of my hand. Um, so I am going to have, um, you know, just some things that I'm going to try to fix it. And maybe that will help you guys for the times when you also drop your acrylic block because everybody does it. Um, and I, was, I wasn't throwing it away. I mean, I already ink blended all the things. Um, but so for the stage, I wanted to add a little bit of shading, a little bit of shadow underneath him. And it's going to be, when you look at something, typically the darker it is, the further it looks away. I am very, very generally drawing in a shadow for her since she is levitating. I do want to note um, that the stamp is made for her to be laying on her side so that she is horizontal and the hoop is passing over her. I thought it would be cute to have her vertical instead of horizontal. So kind of more like the trick, you know, she's, you know, levitating and, you know, this hoop is passing over her. Um, so that's, it was just something different to try. Um, 
I felt like the little rays of light needed actual lights. So I just drew little half circles and then used Copic markers to fill them in with the matching color. I'm back into the Misty now to go ahead and stamp my sentiment, which says has a have a magical day. Um, and I did stamp this twice because the first time I just didn't give it good enough pressure. That was my own fault and it happens sometimes. So now I'm going to use um, some Tombow Mono Multi Glue to put a little bit of glue on the ends here and then glue that to her because I thought like it that that would be easier to add the foam tape if they were already attached as one piece together. So um, I put a obnoxious amount of a scotch foam tape and all these little teeny tiny pieces um, onto her and then also onto my little magician. And then um, I just was messing around with the placement just a little bit, um, you know, around those little stars. And then once I was happy with where she went, I'm going to go ahead and push her down. Um, he's going to be the same thing, just going to peel off that, um, you know, backing tape, push him down. And then this is another way that I'm going to help disguise the error that I had where I dropped um, the little star stamp, and that's to add um, some clear sequins. And I used mostly the small and medium ones from this uh, clear sequin pack from Meet and Tangled. Um, and then I always like to put uh, glossy accents on top to help make sure they're really adhered. And then the, the next way that I'm going to distract from that is I'm going to add little dots of Stardust Stickles. Sometimes I'm adding them to the actual stars because the reason I always use Stardust Stickles is because it takes on whatever color is underneath it. And then I also did a couple of little dots just to kind of fill in those areas. And then that is the whole card. So this is part of the 2018 um, April release. I encourage you to head over to the blog to see all the other amazing things that the design team made. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye. Thank you.